Use me if you can, Flash. Hey guys, welcome to Film Learning, the show dedicated to learning you some filmmaking and learning you good. Now as you guys are aware, a few weeks back we took on the flash running effects and everyone seemed to think it was pretty good. And then along comes this request from Joao Pedro Figueiredo Barbosa on Facebook. I am so sorry dude if I butchered your name. Could you do a video showing how you do a reverse flash effect for the CW series? Well, to quote Mr. Burns, yeah. Once again, just like with our flash running effect, to replicate the reverse flash is pretty damn easy. So in order to complete this effect, you need to shoot your actor on a set or a green screen, either way works, but if you shoot on a green screen, you'll avoid a bunch of masking. That said, I shot mine all in camera, so we'll be going through this the slightly harder way today. You'll also need a copy of Video Copilot's optical flares to make our glowing eyes. Or in the off chance you don't have it, I'll mention how you can fake them glowing eyes anyway, cause I'm nice like that. Now that we've got that out of the way, to After Effects! Alright guys, I've got my footage set up in a comp and ready to go. I've opted to shoot my footage all in camera as opposed to green screen this time, but either option will work just as well. Our first step is to add those glowing red eyes to our actor. To do this, let's head up, grab a new null object, then let's head up and grab another. Next, let's select our footage and head over to Tracker and hit Track Motion. We'll then grab a part of the eye to track and then hit the play button. And hey presto, we now have a track of our first eyeball. Let's edit the target to our null, hit apply and OK. We'll then rinse and repeat that same process for the other eye. Now before we move on, let's rename both of those nulls left eye and right eye. Now let's head up, grab a new solid and let's name it eye. Or don't, I don't really care. Then head back up to effect, video copilot and grab optical flares. Our first step is to head right here and change that transfer mode to on transparent. We'll then position the flare onto your eye and then head up to position, hold alt and hit the stopwatch. Let's then use the pick whip to parent the flare's position to our null position. Make sure you have your null's position exposed as well, otherwise it's not going to work. Now as you can see, our flare moves in sync with our eyeball. Cool eh? Now let's make it red. Let's head up, grab the eyedropper and tint it red. We'll then head into our flare menu and turn off a whole bunch of stuff until we're left with just this one, the glow. Have a good play around with all of the settings in here guys, just to make the flare your own. When you're done, hit OK and then we'll change the transfer mode to screen. Once you're happy, let's then duplicate that solid layer and head up to our flare settings, hold alt and click the stopwatch on position to cancel our previous animation. We'll then reposition the flare onto our other eye, let's rename that layer I2 while we're at it. Head back to the stopwatch, hold alt and then parent it to our left eye null like so. Now it's looking good. For those of you who don't have optical flares, I've rendered out an alpha channeled still of one of the flares for you to use in your project. All you have to do then is just scale it up or down, position it over your eye, and then instead of parenting the optical flare, you'll just be parenting that still directly to the null. Easy. Alright, we've got them eyes all glowy and evil looking. Time to blur out this bad boy. Now, let's start this process by turning off and locking our flare layers, otherwise they'll just kinda get in the way. We'll then duplicate our footage layer, head up and grab the pen tool and draw a mask around our actor. Remember, if you shot this on a green screen, just sit back and relax, you are free and clear guys. But for us chumps, let's collapse down the mask menu and hit the stopwatch on mask path. We'll then go through the footage and adjust our mask as our actor moves. Man, going through this kind of makes me wish I did this on the green screen. Oh well. When you're done, it should look like this. From there, let's hit F and feather the mask out around 10 pixels. Next, let's head up to effect, blur and sharpen and add a box blur. From there, we'll change the blur dimensions to horizontal, turn up the radius to around 25 and finally the iterations to 10. Let's check out a preview. Not bad but I'd like to see a bit of stutter to show that, you know, our reverse flash is really moving. So here's how we do that. 
Hold Alt and hit the stopwatch on iterations. We'll then type this expression, wiggle, space, bracket, 10, comma, five, and then an end bracket. As you can see now, he's got a bit of movement. If you like, you can change these numbers up or down based on your preferences. My final numbers ended up being 20 and five. Our last step is to turn those eyes back on and we're all done. Pretty easy, huh? Add up all those steps and you'll get something like this. So there you have it guys, the reverse flash effect. It's almost stupid easy to accomplish. And when you combine it with our flash running effect, it looks pretty damn cool if I don't say so myself. But that's my time this week guys. If you enjoyed the video, throw me a hearty thumbs up and a share. If you're a newbie, do some clickiness on that subscribe button. We've got 60 other episodes of this show on this channel, so check them all out multiple times. And while you're at it, why not follow me on Twitter or Facebook? And until next week guys, keep learning.